Okay, well, welcome to Ocom's uh, 2015 Strategic Insight and User Conference. Uh, thank you for being here. We're very excited about being able to um, showcase and introduce uh, V10 to you this morning. Um, this is, as Annette said, the very first time that V10 is being previewed, um, and for a lot of people, um, even internally, this is the first time that they'll actually get to see some of the great features uh, that we've been working really, really hard on. Um, I'm going to this morning take you through some of these key features um, that uh, we have been working on and uh, introduce you to the roadmap and some of the features that we've got coming up. But I'd also like to uh, take some time to unpack some of the customer journeys uh, that our customers have been on um, and how that plays in with their digital strategies and also explore the role that Elcom CMS is playing uh, within those uh, digital strategies. So Elcom CMS continues to go from strength to strength. Uh, we are enjoying being Australia's leading .NET content management system. Uh, and in 2014, last year, we were identified in both the Gartner Web Content Management System report uh, and also identified as the best uh, CMS ranked by overall value in the Gleanster Web Content Management report, um, which was an industry analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Uh, but we also share in our customers' success stories. Uh, and recently, we've uh, worked with the Medical Indemnity Protection Society, helping them build out their portal. Uh, and it currently serves over 40,000 members uh, with training services. We've also uh, worked quite closely with the Fred Hollows Foundation, helping them build their intranet. And it currently supports uh, employees over 20 different countries across Asia, Africa, and Australia. We also work with Taking Shape, another intranet that we've helped uh, build, and it distributes automated daily sales information across to all their stores, uh, their retail stores across Australia, and each one is personalised. Also in the US, we work quite closely with the Black Hawk Network, um, and they are the market leader in prepaid products such as gifts cards, uh, and we've helped them build out their partner portal, and it does a lot of great things. For instance, vendor registrations, uh, they use it to distribute important information to their partners, and uh, also a merchant onboarding program as well. So because of the modular nature of Elcom CMS, it can be uh, deployed in a variety of different scenarios. It can be used for public websites, internal intranets, uh, through to learning platforms, uh, and also portals which can surface both internal uh, and external audiences. And I'm sure there's many of you that have, uh, can identify with those scenarios or even um, new scenarios that I haven't even mentioned there. And because of this, we have great opportunity uh, to work with our customers and help them focus on different aspects of their digital strategies. And we found that there are quite a few considerations and challenges uh, which are common to many of the uh, digital strategies um, that probably many of you are working on uh, at the moment. So I might take a little bit of time to unpack a few of these now. It seems that uh, integration is the buzzword of 2015. Um, and when you look into the driving forces behind integration and what that means for people, you can start to understand why. So with the rise of the cloud and APIs and being able to tap into platforms that are easily accessible, that you can switch on and off, uh, we're seeing a rise um, in the needs to be able to connect these different platforms together. People are actually investing in different platforms to do certain tasks, and they're looking at being able to find ways to unlock the information that's stored in these different platforms. So whether it's marketing automation tools, a line of business platforms, it could be CRMs, document repositories, whatever it might be, organisations are starting to understand that um, this data in these different platforms doesn't really talk to each other, or they need to find ways of being able to bring it and surface it. So the interesting thing here is that more and more organisations um, are starting to see the intranet um, as the central hub, the place where information and interactions should really be taking place, um, and bringing forward and unlocking this information that's actually in these um, different platforms underneath. The other growing need is uh, the need to be able to pull or push data from these different systems to enable organisations to start to build up a 360 degree view um, of your business information. So this could be documents, this could be people. So from a public website point of view, it's starting to become a really rising need and priority to be understand who your users are. They're not just visitors that land on your page, they actually have a, a profile that you can start to build up, what their interests are, what their, what their behaviours on your website are actually telling you about what they'd like to see more of or what they'd like to see less of. 
And in the past, it's been really, really hard to be able to access and fuse this information together because it's sitting all over these different platforms. But the rise of APIs have really opened up many opportunities, and I think people are starting to explore how can we actually start to pull this together. Another integration challenge evolves around identities and identity management. And increasingly, we're seeing organisations are looking to provide a, uh, a central place to manage all their user information, their identities, and provide a seamless experience for their users when they're moving from system to system, platform to platform, that they know and can identify those people as they move. Often, digital strategies are focused around connecting, so you know, people with people, uh, people with data, and collaboration is really at the heart of this. And we're seeing the intranets especially are becoming vehicles for connecting w remote workforces and distributed offices and enabling users to be able to interact with their colleagues through one common central platform. And so collaboration tools such as social streams and collaborative editing within intranets are becoming a more established way for organisations who are approaching the challenges around enabling internal communication and bringing together your remote workforce. So the benefits that we're seeing uh, coming out of effective collaboration within a digital strategy is the unlocking of organisational knowledge, which is uh, traditionally really, really hard to do, especially when you've got people dispersed all over the place, and information, and enabling it to be accessible to everyone, especially when they need it. Accessibility within a digital strategy is really all about enabling your users to be able to access the content and information uh, that they need and when they need it. And so 2015 has really seen mobile become a critical component in any digital strategy. The mobile driver within a digital strategy may vary depending on uh, what you're looking at, uh, at doing. It might be public audience choosing to browse your website on their mobile phones on the train into work, through to the rise of bring your own device within organisations, which is being widely adopted, um, and also organisations provisioning mobile hardware uh, for their uh, staff. So because of this, we're seeing a trend towards mobile first and also flat design in terms of trends um, for um, uh, design of websites and also clean, lightweight pages, simple streamlined navigation and content, making it easy for people to get in and access the content. And this provides users on mobile device with a first-class experience which is on par with their desktop counterparts. Another rising impact on accessibility within a digital strategy is that of accessibility compliance. And this is really focused on removing those barriers that prevent access or interaction with websites for people with disabilities or are choosing to use other devices to be able to access content. And so in 2015, we've seen accessibility compliance move really to the forefront of the key considerations in many people's digital strategies today. So, with V10, we've really focused on producing a platform which delivers greater performance uh, than ever before, with the intention of providing you with a foundation to be able to build out your digital strategies. And so the performance is really about the, the platform and the technology being able to meet your business objectives, and that's where we want to see it meet. So I'm going to take a bit of time now to introduce to you the new features of V10, uh, and there's a lot, so I'm going to try and move through them quite quickly. Um, first of all, I'm going to introduce our Exchange and Synergetic connectors. Uh, they enable tight integration with both of these two platforms, Nilcom CMS. We've also brought both Bootstrap and AA accessibility uh, compliance to our front end as well as our back end screens. We've also extended our content delivery network uh, capabilities to include direct publishing of images and documents up to uh, Amazon AWS. We've also been working hard to bring some um, big requested features to some of our big components, such as workflow, reporting, dynamic widgets, mailing list. And we've also brought a huge collection of uh, a lot of requested features uh, to uh, a lot of our most used modules, and these include events, social, membership, corporate directory, and forms. So I'll just introduce a few of those uh, now for you. So the first up is our Exchange Connector, and this is new in V10, and it really enables people to merge their calendar module uh, within their websites and intranets with their appointments that you find in Exchange and synchronise them into one seamless view. It, uh, it provides two-way synchronisation, so this means that if you create an appointment in your, uh, your Elcom CMS calendar uh, and tick a box, it will automatically synchronise back to Exchange, um, and vice versa. You can create uh, appointments using Outlook, and they'll automatically start showing up um, within your Elcom CMS website. 
Um, and this also works with um, uh, Office 365, so the, the SharePoint online uh, platform as well. Next is the Synergetic Connector. And so this is really focused in the education market and schools specifically. And what this is, is a library of 20, well, over 20 article elements, which are designed for displaying and surfacing information that's held in your Synergetic database. And so the idea here is that it will enable you to build up screens um, all the way through to complete school portals, um, really aimed at uh, surfacing information specifically for parents, uh, students, and also teachers. Um, all the data is pulled from Synergetic um, pretty much in real time for the majority of the cases and in some situations data is also pushed back into Synergetic uh, where it's appropriate. The Bootstrap framework um, brings out-of-the-box mobile responsiveness to any website as well as providing consistent styling. And so as I mentioned before, in a world where mobile first and, um, and providing a, uh, a, f a really uh, first-class experience on mobile platforms is essential. Um, Bootstrap is the industry leader in this. And so we've introduced support for the Bootstrap framework um, in 9.5 within our administration screens. If you use that, you'll know that our, all our admin screens now work really nicely on your, um, your, your phones and tablets. Um, but in 10, we've also brought Bootstrap support to our front-end screens as well. So this enables Elcom CMS websites to obviously be more responsive, um, but also enables designers, um, our designers, your designers, uh, who are familiar with the Bootstrap framework, and as I said, it is the industry leader, so there's a lot of people who are familiar with it, to be able to easily customise an Elcom CMS website and to start building themes in a, uh, in a Bootstrap compliant way. With V10, we've also added uh, AA level accessibility compliance uh, to our core authoring experience and our most popular modules. Um, and this includes front end and back end screens as well um, to make them compliant um, to the level of AA. This is a really important achievement and I just want to take a moment to say that because it really does set Elcom CMS apart from, from many other platforms that are really yet to start embracing AA compliance um, and we really want to continue over the next few releases to um, continue to extend and support the level of AA compliance that we are introducing um, in V10. Also in 9.5, we introduced support for content delivery networks, and this is effectively global distribution networks. Um, Amazon, um, Microsoft, Google, they all run these global networks that allow you to pu uh, push up static assets, images and documents, so that you can start serving these, um, these assets um, from the location that's closest to your users. And so in 9.5, we introduced the ability for you to be able to select an article and convert it to a static version, so it doesn't need to go through the engine each time, um, and automatically push up all the assets, images and documents, and CSS and JavaScript, up to the CDN for fast page requests. So in V10, we've actually extended our CDN support to enable the ability to publish images and documents directly from the image and document, document managers in Elcom CMS up to a CDN. So now by ticking a box, you can actually choose to select any asset to automatically be synchronised with uh, the CDN. Uh, at the moment, um, in this release, where uh, we support Amazon Web Services, uh, which is the S3 and CloudFront products, specifically in their uh, stable. Um, and what Elcom CMS will do will then rewrite any references. So as soon, when you're creating your content, you put in that image or you reference it in a dynamic widget, it will automatically start serving up that image or that document from the CDN location um, instead of from your servers. Uh, so what this will do is it effectively will allow you to um, improve your um, page response times and it will also start to bring your um, static assets closer to where your end users are. So if you have a global audience, this is specifically really important. Workflow is really at the heart of Elcom CMS because it enables content to follow a process that it goes through to be reviewed before it's published. And in V10, we've added two highly requested features. The first is the ability to approve a workflow request um, simply through the, uh, the email notification that you receive. So you'll be able to hit reply, type in a comment, and either choose to approve or reject, send the email, um, and that's done. So this will save a lot of time. It uh, means you don't have to go back to the website and log in to approve leave requests or, or whatever you might have to do as a workflow approver. The second feature that we're bringing to workflow, um, which I'm fairly excited about, is um, routing rules. And what this enables you to do is define rules um, on buckets. 
which, based on uh, form's value um, in the form that's been submitted, um, you, you can tell the workflow to um, either skip the bucket entirely, so based on the value in the form, um, skip this bucket, uh, it's not appropriate. You can reassign the approver to somebody else because of a particular value or set of values in the form, um, or if the uh, workflow should terminate early, so it doesn't really need to go further into um, future subsequent baskets. And this will really allow organisations to be able to model more complex business rules using our workflow engine. So based on your feedback, we've also added two highly requested features to our reporting capabilities. So firstly now, in V10, you'll be able to register custom reports. Um, so this means at this stage with some SQL knowledge um, or engaging with us or a partner, you'll be able to um, design a complete custom report which can sit on top of pretty much any data in the Ocom CMS database. And it comes, will, can come with complete filtering options and then it will be accessible through our standard reporting dashboard. The second feature is the ability to schedule reports to be generated and sent through on specific intervals to particular email addresses. Uh, so this means that both out of the box and your custom reports can be scheduled up and sent out to the people that need to access those reports without them either needing to A, have um, access to the administration section and B, needing to log in each time and generate the report. So whether it's daily or weekly or monthly or yearly, you can now start to generate those reports uh, based on uh, time frames and filtering and get those reports generated and attached and sent out. Besides the classic content editor element, uh, dynamic widgets are our next most used element. And in V10, we've introduced the ability to design your own HTML templates for dynamic widgets to use. So before now, dynamic widgets have always used and generated a rigid structure. They always display in the same way, and it's up to you to style them and make them work the way that you want. But now in V10, you'll be able to design your own HTML templates from the ground up and actually build up an entire library um, of HTML widget templates. So this will enable designers to be able to make widgets present the information in any way that you you want it to be able to be displayed. And also importantly, it'll mean that you can actually now make dynamic widgets work with other client side frameworks, not only Bootstrap, for instance, Semantic UI or Foundation, whatever you may be choosing. Dynamic widgets in VTEM will also work with our personalization module, which means that you'll be able to choose a dynamic widget to only be displayed to a specific marketing audience. There's a whole lot more, which I won't go into today, um, but you can see the list up there. Um, so quickly, training manager, you'll be able to now um, define uh, a price for a unit and be able to accept payment online um, for people to go through training. Uh, calendar gets a new level of um, ac accessibility in terms of viewers, and also it now has the web API, so you can access our calendar module making API calls. Mailing list has now campaign ma management, the ability to schedule um, campaigns to go out at different times. SAML, store locator, my account, there's a whole bunch of other stuff uh, which is in V10. So an important part of V10, the development process, is about getting feedback on Elcom CMS, how it's being used and, of course, how it can be improved. And I love hearing about the innovative things that uh, people are doing with Elcom CMS, uh, hearing about ways that we never actually anticipated um, that it would be used. And it's exciting because by listening and understanding that its limits and also its potential, it helps us to make a better product. <laughs> So in V10, we've brought more than 70 new enhancements to our existing features. And I'll quickly introduce you to a few of them now. So our events module has got three new great features coming in it, which is support for reoccurring events, uh, the ability to design complete custom screens and layout at the event type level, and they support even more content tags than they ever did before, and version control for events and also event locations so that you can roll back and make go back to previous versions at any time. Our social and social Q&A modules have received over 10 new enhancements, including things like true multi-threaded conversations. Your social connections and social groups are now going to show up in site search if you want them to. There's a new person picker in the WYSIWYG editors so that you can select somebody um, and embed a link to that person within your content in any page. Moderation, inline linking and inline search has already been added also to the social feed as well. Membership and corporate directory, um, they've got seven great enhancements as well in V10. Uh, so things like organisations are now going to show up in your search results as well. We've created two new article elements for corporate directory um, to allow you to 
be able to display a corporate directory view in any web page that you'd like, um, and also a, a corporate directory filtering element as well um, on that same page or on a different page. This means you can start to surface your, uh, your directory listing and your users wherever you'd like to um, display them. And that can be filtered by groups and all other kinds of things as well to make it contextual. Memberships can be renewed online. Uh, we've got, uh, um, vastly extended the customization options for the membership registration screen, um, custom labels, or reordering the fields, showing and hiding them, and all the other kinds of things that you've uh, been asking for. Um, and we also have introduced the ability to set um, a, uh, what uh, user type and set of user groups that a new member should automatically be assigned to based on their membership type when they register. So the moment that they register, they will have a fully created profile for them as well. Forms has probably received the most love in this release. Um, so if you use Forms, it's probably good news. Um, and it's had over 20 new enhancements. Uh, we were actually tempted to call it Forms 2.0, uh, which is probably an old school term now, but because we actually felt like it was a, it was a new version of the module. Uh, it's not, but we've just bought, um, brought some great new features to the table. So these things um, include custom field support. So um, as a developer, you can actually create your own complete custom field um, and be able to register that within the form. Um, new panels, which is great for creating wizard-style experiences where you can group um, fields together and step through um, a wizard-style experience. PDF generation, so when somebody submits a form, it can create a PDF version of that form, save it in a document manager, um, save forms as draft. Um, people can come back and complete that form at a later date. Um, show specific fields uh, to only specific people um, as based on their user groups that they belong to, um, and um, four new field types, such as a rich text editor, calculated fields, rated um, field orders, um, and there's a bunch more, as I said, there's over 20 um, in forms, um, but there's just a few. So hopefully that gives you a, a small taste of what's in um, V10. It really is a big release for us. Uh, and you know that only really starts to scratch the surface, uh, which is why we're actually looking at doing some more deeper dives uh, later on. But the process never stops, right? And, you know we're already looking forward and planning the next release of Elcom CMS. Um, so let's take a little bit of a glimpse as to the future of Elcom CMS. Um, as I opened with, integration is becoming one of the most critical aspects to digital strategies today. And an important part of what Elcom CMS needs to be in order to deliver in this area is to be extensible. And so we are working towards Elcom CMS um, being powerfully simple, not only in its authoring experience, but also how it can be in, built on top of and extended to meet your ever-changing business needs. So we're committed to growing our REST-based web API, uh, and in the next release, we're going to continue to extend our web API cut to cover more modules and connectors than it currently does. And we're also going to add in more hooks and listeners, and, and these provide the ability for you to be able to kind of drop in your own custom logic. Um, so whenever something happens in Elcom CMS, like a new member is registered or a form is submitted, you can actually execute your own custom code and do your own um, you know, kind of business um, needs there. So we're going to introduce a whole lot more of them in coming releases. And we're also going to start on the journey of bringing MVC support uh, to Elcom CMS to enable websites to be built in the MVC uh, framework while sitting on top of and leveraging an underlying Elcom CMS instance. As already mentioned, uh, V10 introduced Exchange Calendar integration. Uh, and this does already include Office 365 integration with it out of the box. But moving forward, we've identified that more and more organisations are embracing Microsoft's Office 365 offering. And I don't think this is going to slow down. And so this is going to start with um, supporting, obviously, um, SharePoint Online with our SharePoint connector in the next release. But also from there, we are currently looking at other ways of being able to include deep support for Office 365 into Elcom CMS moving forward. So based on our work with the Australian Drug Foundation, we're also looking at introducing more sophisticated and powerful ways to manage the content authoring process and pipeline. And so in the next release, this will also include a streamlined view for content authors to manage their workload and manage their upcoming uh, authoring requirements and content review process. And this will also include a robust citation engine. So when you're creating content, it'll enable you to create interlinking references, footnotes, and also citations that are embedded and linked within article content. 
A highly requested feature as well, which will be coming in the next release, is the ability to accept and manage donations. And so this will see a new module which will enable Elcom CMS websites to manage active donation campaigns, uh, accept donations online, and also manage those complexities around notifications and reporting and invoicing that goes uh, with accepting donation payments online as well. So where are websites headed? Uh, that's a bit of a view in terms of uh, the digital strategies, um, you know, thing, challenges that you may have today, um, where Elcom CMS is going with V10 and also the future in terms of its roadmap. But where are websites headed? You know, a bit of blue sky thinking. Um, and I'd just like to share a couple of reflections that we've, uh, we've noticed and also identified within the market. Um, the first is platform integration. You, know, okay, you can probably see there's a bit of a theme with that thinking here, but that's going to continue. I think you're all probably you know, looking at, uh, you know, you've invested in things like you know, Salesforce and document repositories and, and CRMs and these um, kind of platforms. And I think that need to be able to connect that information together and surface it um, is, is just going to grow and it's going to continue. Whether it's a public website, you know, from marketing information, making um, your user experience more personal, um, through to your internal audiences, uh, you know, making sure that uh, they can find the content um, regardless of what system it's sitting in um, is going to become more and more essential, especially as everything moves um, more digital and automated. The second is experience personalization, and this is already happening. Um, more and more people are looking uh, at YouTube and eBay and these really big sites, and maybe not even realizing it, but every single time you visit that site, they're personalizing that experience just for you. You're seeing recommendations that are just for you. And that experience personalization um, is going to increase. You know, your users are going to expect uh, your websites to understand them. Every time you come, they come back, they're going to start to expect a little bit more of a tailored experience. And this will also then cascade and ripple into your, uh, your intranets as well. Your internal users um, are going to start to f uh, look for ways to be able to you know, uh, remove the clutter um, f from the organisation information um, that they're presented with um, and just be pre presented with the information within your organisation uh, that is relevant to them. Um, Productivity powerhouses, you know, websites both internally and externally facing um, are becoming more powerful. People are being able to do more um, on websites than ever before. Um, you know, as already mentioned, you know, there's, there's, there's Google uh, apps, there's Office 365, there's Dropbox, there's Evernote. There's so many productivity tools out there that are purely web-driven um, and app-driven. And... Uh, the web is seen as a productivity powerhouse. People don't install software on their, their computers anymore. They, they use um, web-driven um, browser-delivered uh, um, software. And so people are starting to expect that from their websites as well. Intranets are becoming more of a business reliance in terms of processes. Um, and that is going to continue. The websites are going to become more productivity powerhouses. And websites are also becoming a bit of a springboard. Um, you know, so with the rise of social sharing, everyone is social sharing. Um, but especially uh, with the rise of apps, uh, people in the morning you know, don't start with websites anymore, do they? They, they start with apps. They fire up Facebook or Twitter uh, or Zite or whatever it is, and they read their news, they, they consume their information, and they start with apps. And then articles are shared within these apps, and they click on the link, they read more, and they go to your website. And then normally they bounce back to their app because that's what they were in the middle of doing. And so websites are going to become more of springboards. It's going to be about people are going to arrive at your website at a particular point that you may not have actually expected them to do. Um, yes, they might uh, land at your homepage, but quite often they're going to land at an article or a shared link. And so this is only going to continue uh, moving forward that websites are going to become more of a, a landing destination. Uh, and so it's going to become even more important to capture and engage and deliver the information that your, your visitors, your people... Um, are expecting to find when they land on your site, wherever that may be. And so websites as springboards um, is going to uh, continue, um, I think, as a trend uh, moving forward as well. So working on um, Elcom CMS V10 has really been an incredible journey. Um, and I hope you agree that there's some great features um, in it that I've introduced you to today. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank the amazing, um, the, the amazing product team. Uh, it's really been a huge effort to reach today, and it's been exciting to be able to present it to you. Uh, and it's a real testament to their dedication and hard work. Um, their passion for this product really is second to none. 
Um, so look, if you have any questions coming out of today's showcase, um, you know, please have a chat in the break with anyone wearing an Elcom little shirt. Come and have a chat with me. Um, we'll be demoing some of the great features, but of course you can also you know, um, uh, request a, uh, a, a private demo or more of a deep dive if there's uh, any particular one of those features or set of features that you'd like to unpack and understand a little bit more um, around what that means for you um, and your organisation. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you.